Now, Donate, you are, you said, teaching African American studies in, uh, do I say correctly, public schools in Orlando, Florida? Yes. So, African American history in public schools, yes, which is a, a, a big difference. And I think that has um, confused a lot of folks the difference. Because um, African American between- studies is an analytical approach to history and to Black experience. But I teach um, African American history or Black history, um, which which is you know to me a a, a night and day difference. <laughs> and I you teach it to ninth graders in public school. To ninth graders, I just was going to ask you to say a little bit more about the difference in your mind between African American studies, on the one hand, mm-hmm. and African American history on the other. Would you? Right. So I I think, like I said, I think it it just it confuses a lot of people when you hear African American studies and African American history. Folks just assume it's the same, and it isn't. So the African American studies is more, like I said, an analytical approach to what we call the Black experience, um, to history. There is a lot of truths in African American studies, but it's also met with conjecture and a lot of opinion. And I think sometimes with African American studies, the truth and opinion gets mixed in together. And you, if you don't know history, if you don't know African American history or Black history, you would think the opinions are the truth. And then when you talk about Black history or African American history, it's simply facts. You cannot argue with facts. We know slavery existed. We know that Black people were dehumanized during slavery. We know that Jim Crow existed. These are facts. Um, But with African-American studies, you can argue about things like reparations or whether or not you think American descendants of slaves deserve reparations. You can argue in African-American studies about whether systemic racism exists today. Um, But in African-American history, you can argue whether systemic racism existed during Jim Crow era because it did. (laughs) There is facts, there's proof. Um, There were laws written for Black people um, that held them back. Um, But you can argue today in African-American studies whether or not it still exists for Black people. So I think that is the difference. And many people um, just mixed up, combined the two. It sounds to me, correct me if I'm wrong, like African-American history takes the critical race theory out of African-American studies. Absolutely. In Florida, I keep hearing people say, we need CRT. Um, why is Florida getting rid of CRT? Well, first of all, Florida schools, we teachers don't technically teach CRT. Um, but however, you have teachers that have that background. Um, and so their pedagogy is in the style of CRT. But if you're teaching facts, if you're teaching straight black history, you don't need CRT. It's not something that's needed because history is history cannot be debated. Um, it is facts. It, it, it happened. Um, you can't compare the two. Uh, I mean, I think you can learn from the past, of course, but you cannot say uh, one of my colleagues, she's told her students uh, she compared slavery to the to the to the NBA um, because of not the, which, the NFL. She compared it to the NFL. And I'm like, what? I, I don't understand. And then she made an analogy about how the players are treated. And uh, I, I guess the the physical training of the the players and how the coach makes so much money. I'm like, but the players make millions. Slaves didn't make anything, so that's not even a thing. So when people talk about teachers teaching CRT, I think they mean that would be an example of her pedagogy, her style of teaching. But um, if you're teaching Black history, if you're teaching facts, you don't need CRT. You don't need. Um, African-American studies, um, because again, you cannot argue with facts. Okay. I'm going to just try this. A person might say facts don't speak for themselves. They require to be interpreted and narrated. It's true that facts are facts, but history is not simply a compilation of facts. History is, a person might argue, developing a narrative about the past. It's like telling a story about the past. You can't escape that. No matter who you are, what your political or theoretical disposition might be, everybody is one way or another going to fit those facts around some kind of narrative frame, and they're going to tell a story. America is a great country. Would you not allow that to be said in your classroom? African-Americans are a marginalized people 
who have had to fight against the oppression and domination. These are not exactly facts, although they are true statements about our history, a person could argue. What would you say to that, the, to the critic who wants to preach about Black history, not just list the facts? He wants to get the students oriented in a certain frame of mind. I mean, uh, is that something that you would not want to see in your classroom? I think you can definitely talk about the marginalization of Black people. And I think you can talk about that, um, that existed in slavery, that it it existed in Jim Crow. And someone even, some may even make the argument that it exists today. And I will allow those discussions. I, I, I want those discussions to happen. But I would not push that on students. I would want to, I, I love debates in my class. So I, that would be a great debate to have. And I would have debates that were similar to that. But I think the difference is I would allow the students to engage in that. And then they would have to, to find sources to back up their point. Um, and the person that has the sources and back up their points, um, I think that's great. They're applauded. Um, and, I th- and if we want to do a winner and, <laughs> or, or a person that didn't win, um, we, we can do that. But I definitely applaud those discussions. I welcome those discussions. I don't shut down those discussions. Um, because I think you can, like you mentioned, um, you can definitely make those claims, but you have to prove it. Yeah, I want to briefly just say, I think the big difference, I mean, and that's a really smart way to approach it, but you're right. You need to add some context and something around the facts. But the problem is the difference with those who are claiming the CRT or whatever they want to call it is that they're purposefully teaching it that way. So they're in their classroom as they lead from the front of the class, they're saying these are facts. You you and I and many others write and talk about the problems with the 1619 Project. And what it says is, what what is one of the essays, uh, Kevin's essay about uh, traffic? It says there's an essay called Traffic. Have you ever been in a traffic jam in Atlanta? Did you know that that's tied to slavery? So there is no nuance there. They're explicitly saying everything, every gap, that we see today can be drawn to slavery. And people understand these things, yes. as you say, through stories. So I'll give you a quick one. My son, when he was in, and he was six years old in first grade, this is last year, he, it was MLK day. So he, they had a lesson at school about MLK. I'm saying it slowly so you understand I'm saying MLK. He came home, we're sitting down for dinner, and I asked him to turn the light off. And he said, why? Because I got brown skin and I can be a slave? <laughs> he got that from the MLK lesson in first grade. So I would like anyone, right. any proponent of CRT 1619, Purposeful African American History, to explain to me how that lesson benefited him, or is it net positive for anyone in America to be learning today? Okay, so so this right. is... Right, and the issue I have with some of those things as well is I have students... Um, who are uh, some of my students are middle class, higher middle, upper middle class. And one day, one of the girls asked me, Ms. Roll, am I oppressed? And I just thought, oh, that's interesting that she asked me that. And I said, why do you ask me that? And this was uh, a couple of years ago, actually. And it was when the George Floyd situation happened and everyone was saying black people are oppressed. We need to do something about the systemic racism that's happening. Her mom's a doctor. Uh, very Cosby Show situation happening uh, with her. Her dad was uh, an engineer um, and she just assumed she was oppressed because she was black. And Tamika Mallory and all those people told her she was depressed, oppressed. Um, so she asked me and then I said, well, what do you think? Um, and then I and I gave her an example of what oppression looked like and just taking her back to things that we've studied. Um, and then I said, well, what what what, what do you think? And then she was like, I, I don't feel like I am, <laughs> but then you can tell she was very torn because she was told that she was. And so you have lessons like that happening um, in schools and then you have the media telling them one thing as well, when their life does not depict what other people are s- saying to them. Okay, excuse me for saying this, but it sounds like exactly what I would expect to hear on Fox News critiquing critical race theory as an indoctrination of our young people uh, in the public schools, and we have to get control of that. Do you? I'm going to give you now, Charles and Donique, the opportunity to disassociate yourselves, if you would like to, from the label of being Black conservatives as far as education of our young people is concerned. <laughs> Man, as much, it's funny, because as much as I write and speak about, I try to maintain 
you know, a distance from a political standpoint. But once you add, yeah. you're giving me a chance to disassociate myself from conservatism from a standpoint of what's being to. done in education. Now, I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I'm having to no. own that and just take the arrows that may come because I've seen enough <laughs> of uh, of what the alternative can do that I would, I, you know, I, I won't do that. I, I think that um, in many cases there is, uh, I know this is another thing that gets you in trouble, but there is, because um, everything now is subjective and however you feel, it's about what you feel and your truth. I mean, there are some truths and I think, what Donique just explained is a perfect example of someone who's living a totally different life from what they're being told black life is like. But because they're told that, they think that mo- they wouldn't make this stuff up. It's in the media. It's people I respect. It's my teacher. So even though I don't feel it, it must be true. So I must augment my reality a bit to fit the narrative that's being told about me. I think uh, one of the things that, that, that I will say that's not left or right specific, the biggest problem with how Black America is portrayed is that everyone, they come from a different angle, but I find far too many left and right come from an assumption of Blacks in this kind of negative light. So someone on the left will say, oh, we have to help these poor Black people because they're all uneducated, you know, poor and in prison. And someone on the right will say, yes, they're uneducated, poor and in prison, but you know, part of it has to be some agency. They have to pull the boots up and they have to put some work in and they have to own some of their stature and some of the uh, uh, work that needs to be done to get them out of that. All that may be true, but we're ignoring the fact that most of us don't live. So I'm screaming saying, hey, most of us aren't in that stereotypical box that you're putting us in. You know, you say crime, crime is bad. There, there is obviously a disproportionate number of blacks committing crime, but violent crime, still two and a half percent. So I like to scream, we are the 97%. What about all the rest of us rich, poor, and middle class who are Black who aren't committing violent crimes? So either way it goes, there's a there's a perception that that's what Black life is like. And I don't know any Black people that say, I would trade that in to be white, to be other, to be whatever. So I think that's part of the problem, too. So while I'm maintaining my conservatism, I will argue that there is a problem with how Blacks are depicted. 